All right, how's it going, y'all? Today we're gonna be talking about how to use a Raspberry Pi and a big old external hard drive as an awesome offsite backup for Synology NAS. So I did a video on my setup for this about maybe three or four months ago, and back then it was a very simplified backup. It just used a constant rsync. The Raspberry Pi was reaching out and grabbing the files from the Synology. However, now we're gonna go a step further and really upgrade it because now we're going to be using Hyper Backup and using the Raspberry Pi as what's called an rsync server. So rsync is actually more than just a copying command. It actually is an entire protocol that allows your Raspberry Pi or whatever Linux machine to appear as this target. This target then has what's called rsync modules, which in a lot of ways are similar to SMB shares, but fully designed for backups. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to configure it like that. So that way the Synology just sees the Raspberry Pi as this rsync server that it can automatically use hyper backup to copy and send files to and back things up really nicely. Some of the biggest advantages of this is now I will know when my backups fail and things like that because Synology will email me. And so it's a really easy setup for this and we're gonna go ahead and set this up. All right, so in my last video, I went over how to boot off of a flash drive instead of a micro SD card for a Raspberry Pi 4. And we're gonna really want to set this up because this way it's way less likely that the flash drive is gonna fail versus a micro SD card. And so that way it's just gonna be a lot easier. You could also have this set up on the SD card and also on the flash drive. And so if your SD card fails, have it set to automatically boot to the flash drive. That way you've got a clean fallback and you could actually have everything set up exactly the same way because it's just going to be a server. It's gonna do the exact same thing. So that's one thing you could do, but I'm not gonna set this up because it's not too big of a deal if this does fail, especially given the fact it's very unlikely the flash drive is gonna fail. The reason it's not too big of a deal for me is I'm just gonna put this at my friend's house down the street. So if I have to go in and update things, it's not a big of a deal. And then this video is going to cover how to set up a Raspberry Pi as an rsync server, and then using Synology's hyper backup to back up to it. Then I'm gonna let it run locally. It's probably gonna take a day or two because it's about 10 terabytes of data, I think. Then after that, we are going to set up a OpenVPN connect. So it automatically always connects back to my OpenVPN server. So that way I don't have to open up any ports remotely. Instead, I can just open up ports locally and it will have a very secured encrypted tunnel. All right, and so really that's all there is to it. I've got a big old, I think this is a 10 terabyte external easy store. And it's great because it's a hard drive with its own power supply. You need to make sure that whatever drive you're using has an external power supply or has a really low draw like an SSD because the Raspberry Pi does not have that much power to power what most computers would be able to power. So just remember that. And you can also buy really cheap powered USB hubs. And I'll go ahead and leave an Amazon link in the description below of those. Overall, this is just gonna be a much better setup because we're also gonna be able to encrypt it from the Synology and it's also gonna be run on the Synology. That way, if I wanna see the status or back anything up, I can just connect directly from the Synology to this hyper backup and it will work much cleaner. And it will even be giving hyper backup versioning. Though if you wanted just a standard rsync, though if you did want like a standard rsync, that is also configurable from hyper backup. All right, so with that, I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the drive and plug in my Raspberry Pi. All right, so now I've got everything set up. I'm booting off that flash drive I set up and I've got the hard drive connected via the USB port. So now I've gone ahead and SSH in the Pi and the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is format that hard drive to ext4. So to do that, we're gonna do a sudo fdisk-l to list them. And I've already shown this before. And so we can see right here that this is my drive right here, this dev sdb1. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to do a sudo fdisk and then that path right there. Except we're gonna do sdb, not sdb1. And so what we're gonna do the first time is we're going to format it with a D for delete. So the partition's been deleted and then N for new and then just defaults from here. I go over this already in another video that has a lot more detail on how to do this. All right, so perfect. We have now created a partition on this disk. So we will hit W to write it and now it should be done. So now we should see if we run that F disk L command again, we've got the same setup but you probably do not have a Linux file system beforehand. And so now we need to make an exe file system on there. So we're just gonna do sudo mkfs for make file system 
dash T exe4, and then this path right here again. This time it's the full path. And it's gonna take a little while, especially because it's a spinning disk and a pretty large hard drive. All right, and so now we've got the ext file system on that drive. So now what we need to go ahead and do is actually create a folder to mount it and then mount it. So to do that, we're gonna do sudo mkdir, and we're gonna make it at mount, and we'll call it backup. All right, so it's just made a folder where we can mount it to. The way Linux mounts USB drives and things like that is you actually basically create a virtual link to it via a folder. So that's why we created that folder there. And now we're going to do a sudo chmod r 777 just to give everybody read write execute to that folder, which is not a big deal because this is going to be encrypted. So now everybody will have read write and execute to that folder, which is what we want. All right, and so now what we need to do is we need to set it up so that the Raspberry Pi will mount this folder every single time it boots up. And the way we're gonna do this is using what's called the UUID or the unique identifier for the actual drive to say, whenever you see this drive, this is where you put it. And we're gonna to wanna to put it at mount backup. So to see it, we're gonna do sudo blkid, whoops. And right here is the UUID of this SDB1. And so we're just gonna go ahead and copy that right here. And you need to make sure it's the right one. So it's ext4 and it's the right location. That's just a good way of making sure you know what you're mounting. So I just went in and copied that. And now we're going to do a sudo nano for the text editor, etc fstab, which is what you do to mount things on boot. So what we're gonna do is it's very similar to these lines. We're just gonna add an additional one. And we're gonna follow a similar format. We're gonna say UUID instead of part UUID, paste it in there. And then the path that we wanted to, which is that mount slash backup. So it's gonna say, whenever we boot up, we're gonna find this disk right here and we're gonna mount it here. And it's an ext4. And then we're just gonna add in some parameters to make sure that it doesn't fail when it boots up and things like that. So we're gonna say defaults, auto, and this no fail will make sure that we don't ever return a fail if it's not available. And then zero, zero. All right, and that's really all there is to it. We're gonna do control X to exit, yes to save it, and click enter. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do a sudo mount dash A to mount everything in the fstab file. All right, so now let's hope that this worked. The way we're gonna tell is we're gonna do an ls blk. And as you can see here, where previously was not mounted anywhere, it has now been mounted to mount slash backup. This means every single time the Raspberry Pi boots up, it will be able to mount to it, which is great. Let's go ahead and just do a touch and try to make sure that this actually works. So we're gonna do a touch, mount, backup. And unfortunately, what we need to do is make sure that we have permissions on it. So we're gonna do a sudo chmod 777 and the mount folder. Because sometimes when it mounts the first time, it doesn't actually apply the permissions. So now let's try that same touch test and it successfully worked. So now if we go into the mount backups folder, we will see that test file, which means everything worked. I'll just go ahead and remove it. But perfect. We have now got all of this set up, and so our external drive will automatically be mounted every single time we boot up the Raspberry Pi. And so that's exactly what we wanted to happen. And so now what we need to do is we're gonna set up that rsync datum that I was talking about earlier. That's that rsync server that allows our Synology to send files over it with hyper backup just based off of the rsync protocol. It's gonna be a really clean way of doing all of this, and it's going to be very efficient. And so I'll just go ahead and clear it to give us some space. And the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is just make sure we have the rsync module. It comes with Raspbian, but it's a good thing to check. So we're gonna do a sudo apt update to update our package links. And then we'll do a sudo apt install rsync, but we should already have it. Perfect, yeah, we've already got it. So now we're gonna go ahead and configure our rsync protocol. 
To do that, we're going to do sudo nano for your text editor, and it's at etc slash rsync etc rsync d config. And so this is going to be the configuration file for our rsync. So it's a pretty straightforward setup, and there's more documentation online about it. But the first thing we're going to do is call backup, and that's going to be the rsync module. And so for that, we're going to say the path, and that is equal to mount slash backup, which is what we set up earlier. Comment. This is just good to do. Then read only. It was false. And timeout, 300 seconds. The timeout's just good to do to make sure that if a connection fails, it does timeout successfully. It's just good to specify. And now we're going to say auth users, and we're going to call it Synology. And this is going to be the account that our Synology is going to use. And so we've got to give it access to this. This is just an account we're creating just for our sync and it has no other permissions other than that. And so since we've created that, we're going to create a secrets file that allows us to store the password. So to do that, we're going to do secrets file and it's in the same place, etc slash rsync d dot secrets. And so we're going to create this etc rsync d dot secrets file and it's going to have the username and password for the Synology. All right, and so that's all we've got to do for the rsync d config. We're going to save it with control X to exit, yes to save it, enter to write it. And now we need to create that rsync secrets file. So we're going to do sudo nano rsync d.secrets. And for this, it's just colon separated user password. So we're going to call it Synology, because that, that was that user we used. And for this video, I'm going to use 123456 for the password. Now, obviously, once I'm done with this video, I'm going to update that. Don't worry. But even then, it's actually not too big of a deal because none of y'all are going to have access to the VPN that this is on. It's only going to be allowing local traffic through there. So it's actually fairly secure just off that. Plus, because the backups are going to be encrypted, it actually really would not matter if somebody got access to it. All they could do is really delete my backups, which is unfortunate, but not critical. And we're going to save it with control X to exit. Yes, enter. All right, so now our rsync datum is all ready to start. All right, so now that that's done, we need to make sure that our rsync datum starts up on boot. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit the rsync file by typing sudo nano etc defaults and rsync. Just click enter. And we're just going to go down this line and say rsync enabled equals true. All right, now we're done with that. So we're going to save it. And one thing I did forget to do is change the modification right for that secrets file. So we're just going to do a sudo chmod 600 for only root has read and write to it and nobody else has any access to it of etc rsync dot secrets. So now only the root can read that secrets file. All right, and so now let's go ahead and just do a reboot on our Raspberry Pi and see if that rsync module starts. So we're going to do sudo reboot. All right, and so now I've just gone ahead and rebooted and SSH back into my Raspberry Pi, and so we should be good to go. One thing to note, you might have to run the very first time a rsync dash dash datum in case it doesn't start up automatically, but that's only for the very first time. I did not have to do it, though I have heard some people have had to do it with, I guess, slightly different configurations. And so now what we're going to want to do is log into our Synology. All right, so as you can see here, I've logged into my Synology DSM, and we're going to go into Hyper Backup right here. If you don't have it, you can just grab it from Package Center. It's really easy. And what we're going to do is we're going to click Hyper Backup, and we're going to set up a new backup. And so under the options here, we're going to choose rsync. You could also choose rsync copy, which is a single version. So rsync copy just basically clones all of your files directly over. Then regular rsync uses the standard snapshots, which is great for hyper backup. So that's what I'm going to select is rsync. Click next. And then we're going to say that it's a rsync compatible server. For the IP address, it is 10.0.0.7. .0 .0 .7. 
That's just what it is locally. And so this is the first configuration for the local setup. You could also use this if you wanted to open up those rsync ports, though that is a little bit more risky and you have to make sure to have a very good secrets file and a very good password. I would not recommend doing this. Instead, I would just recommend using a VPN. And so for transport encryption, we actually can just leave it off. And this is because we're gonna be using it only for a VPN, so it doesn't make sense to slow down our server like that. Another thing to note, this is just for when we're doing it locally. Once we add in an open VPN server on here, once the first backup completes, we'll be able to use that instead. For username, we're going to say it's Synology, which is that user we created in that rsync secrets file. And for password, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, as I said in that. And now your moment of truth here is when you click down this, this down arrow, and we can see right here that this backup module did in fact get there, so that we are good. And it's automatically created a directory for it. So that means our Synology is successfully communicating with our Raspberry Pi rsync, which is awesome. So now we're gonna click next. And now we're gonna choose what files to back up and what folders. I have a much better video on how all of this works, but for this, I'm just gonna go through and click Space Rex. And under photography, I'm going to want to choose Lightroom and processed, but I don't need to back up all my videography stuff because it's not super critical, though I might start making some better filters for that. But this is just the initial backup. All right, and so you can do more complex things with file filters and getting really into whatever you'd like, but this is all I'm gonna be using. And so I'm just gonna click next. And here we can also choose things to back up, specific services. There's none of these that I care about too much here, honestly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and choose none of them. And I'll choose Synology Drive Server. And so what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're going to go through these. I'm actually gonna set up a bandwidth limitation when I apply this on the actual remote one. But for now, since it's local, you're, it's gonna be a lot easier to do it first locally because it's gonna be way faster and then move it off. If you had to back up 10 terabytes of data, it could take months. And we're gonna say our backup schedule and make sure to do client-side encryption and create a password. And yeah, these are all the options I'm good with. We'll do a backup rotation and we'll do a smart recycle, which I'm gonna be fine with the default. And it's just going to download the first encryption key for me, which is really nice to have. And it's gonna say backup now, and we're gonna say yes. And so now it's just backing up to our Pi, and it is working great. It's going to take quite a while because this first backup is going to be very large. But once it's done with that, we can go ahead and set up an open VPN server and get connecting to it, and so we can set up remotely. All right, so it's actually gonna take a while to even write any files to it, but we'll go into our SSH for our Raspberry Pi really quickly and we'll CD into that backup folder just to see what's going on. And as you can see, this tank.hbk for hyper backup is successfully written. And so that means hyper backup is working and it is delivering data to it. So that means everything's working. Now, if you had chosen just rsync copy, you would essentially just see every single one of your files in here, but it's up to you to see what you need. All right, and so really that's all there is to it. We now have our Synology backing up to our Raspberry Pi using rsync and hyper backup. It's got encryption, it's going to give us notifications, and it's just such a better solution. In the next video of this, I'm gonna be hooking up an open VPN server into all of this, so that way the Raspberry Pi automatically connects to it. And then we'll also do some final touches, such as having it reboot every week or two, just to make sure it's always working, and also have it automatically update. All right. Well, that's it for this. Go ahead and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below and have a good one. Bye.